Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vinu, Assistant Professor from the Department of Medicine. In this session, we will be dealing with patient identification, preparation and interpretation of a normal ECG. Before going into the session, I would like you to know why do we request or why do we do an ECG for a patient. ECG is usually used in the evaluation of symptoms like chest pain, palpitations, breathlessness and syncope because these symptoms might be an indication of an acute cardiac event like myocardial infarction, acute heart failure and arrhythmias. ECG is also used in the evaluation of electrolyte imbalances like imbalances in sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium etc. ECG is used during the process of cardiopulmonary resuscitation and also after the process of CPR. ECG is also used in evaluation of side effects of drugs and toxins. Certain drugs like digitalis, tricyclic antidepressants are pro-arrhythmogenic and they can lead to certain cardiac events which can be identified in an ECG. Coming to the first step in an ECG recording, first is patient identification. Identifying a correct patient is very very important. You should either identify the patient by using the wrist brands which the patient wear or if the patient is not able to communicate at least through the bystanders. The printed recording that is the ECG paper should always bear the correct identification details of the patient. Coming to the next step of ECG recording is informed consent. This is one of the most important step in the process of ECG recording. First thing, the patient should be given a clear and precise information about the process of this ECG recording and also the, pe the person who is performing the procedure should introduce themselves and they should explain about the process in a very short and also the person who is recording should also inform the patient that the procedure is going to be very brief, not more than 5 minutes and it is going to be painless. Also, information about the level of undress and the use of adhesive electrodes should also be mentioned to the patient. Coming to the third important step is positioning the patient. The patient should ideally be positioned in a semi recumbent position with 45 degree inclination. If not possible, a supine position is also enough. And you should make sure that the limbs are well supported on the couch. And also you should make sure that the patient is completely relaxed and comfortable. You should make sure that the limbs do not touch the railings of the cot because either the limbs moving, moving around or the limbs which are touching the railings can alter your ECG recording. In patients whom the ECG recording is altered or because the patient is not able to position properly because of the pain, then you should mention or you should annotate in the ECG the reason for suboptimal ECG quality. Before recording an ECG, make sure the patient is still and relaxed. This picture shows you the normal positioning of a patient where the patient is completely relaxed sitting in a semi recumbent position with 45 degree inclination with the recorder standing to the right side of the patient and an ECG recording is made. Coming to the next step the equipment and clinical room specification. You should make sure that the room and the equipment are clean. Next, the equipment should be safe and it is ready to use with correct date and time which is entered. Also, you should make a visual inspection of the equipment such as the cables, the wires, the plugs and rule out any faults in the machinery. For battery operated machine, you should ensure that it is fully charged before the procedure. Coming to the next step, the environmental conditions. 
This is also very critical step in an ECG recording process. The, you should make sure that the room is safe, it is private, either walled or screened or curtained and also it should be quiet, uncomfortable. The room should be made or designed in such a way that it is accessible for even the disabled patients and also the couch should have a height adjustable option for and also that should be accessible from both the sides and you should make sure that it is stocked appropriately with adequate batteries, electrodes, ECG papers etc. And you should also have options for cleaning and disposable of the waste materials properly. Now coming to the process of documenting either the digital documentation or manual documentation is mandatory for all ECGs. The documentation should have the following parameters. One thing, first important thing is the patient's name. Next is the patient's date of birth or the age. Next is the patient's identification number or the hospital number. The ECG should also have the data about the recorder and also the person who has requested for the ECG. Also, it should bear the date and time along with name of the institution and it should also have a mention about any alterations in the standard lead positions. Coming to the next step of placing an electrode, you all know that we have four limb electrodes and six chest electrodes. So first coming to the limb electrodes, you should remember in such a way that each arm electrode has a separate color code. So remember in the order of right arm, left arm, left leg and the right leg. The colors are red, yellow, green and black respectively. These electrodes will have a specific color and the electrodes will also be named but remembering each arm electrode with that particular color is very very important. This right arm limb lead is placed in the right forearm proximal to the wrist. In the similar way, the left arm limb lead is placed in the left forearm proximal to the wrist. Coming to the left leg limb lead, it is placed in the left lower leg proximal to the ankle. Similar way, the right leg lead is placed in the right lower leg proximal to the ankle. So I think this picture will explain you the color code. So this is the this is the limb electrode and this is the chest electrode. The limb electrodes are marked as red, green, yellow and black. This is placed in the corresponding arms to the corresponding with the corresponding colors. This picture the second picture is about the chest leads. It is also coded with colors red yellow, green, brown, black and purple. It is named from C1 to C6. So V1, V1 to V6 has separate colors. V1 is red, V2 is yellow, V3 is green, V4 is brown, V5 is black and V6 is purple. These six leads are placed in the chest in certain anatomical landmarks which is very very important. So for placing the chest leads you should first identify the angle of Louis that is your manubrium sterni. This corresponds to your second intercostal space. So for placing V1 it is placed in the fourth intercostal space at the right sternal border. V2 is placed similarly on the fourth intercostal space on the left sternal border. After placing V2, V4 should be placed. V4 is placed in the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. So this is the midclavicular line. V3 is placed between V2 and V4. So this picture will clearly tell you how V4 to V6 is placed. 
B4 as you all know it is placed in the fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line and V5 is placed in the same horizontal plane that is in the same fifth intercostal space but in the anterior axillary line and V6 is placed in the same horizontal plane as V4 but in the mid axillary line. Okay. So, now you have been given a clear idea about placing the limb leads and the chest leads. Now, we will go to some special situations where the positioning of the leads is not possible as we have seen previously. One such condition is dextrocardia. Dextrocardia is a condition which is the heart is placed on the right side instead of the usual left side. So, the recording cannot be done in the usual way. So, what we do is we change the leads and place them on the right side. How do we place? This picture will give you a clear understanding. We are not going to change the position of V1 and V2. It is in the same position as before, but we change this V3 to V6 exactly opposite as the left side. We are not going to change any of the intercostal spaces, any of the anatomical landmarks, but exactly on the right side like how we saw V3, V4, V5 and V6 earlier but on the opposite side but we name the leads as V1R to V6R. Now coming to one another special situation is posterior wall myocardial infarction where your leads has to be placed at the back of your chest. So, this picture will tell you how do we record a posterior wall recording. So, we have leads V7, V8 and V9. These V7, V8 and V9 are placed in the same fifth intercostal space that is corresponding to V4, but V7 is placed in the posterior axillary line and V8 is placed in the tip of the scapula and V9 in the left paraspinal region. So, now you know how do we record a posterior wall ECG. Okay. So, you have placed the leads properly, but in certain conditions you may have certain abnormalities in the ECG not because of the cardiac activity, but because of some altered electrical activity. So, for a good quality ECG, you should make sure that it is devoid of these abnormal electrical activities. One such thing is the loose lead artifact. When you look at this ECG, when you look at these uh, waves, you might think there is something which is very much abnormal with the heart, but it is not so. The scenario here is these leads that is 2 and lead 1 are not attached properly in their corresponding positions. This could be either because of excessive sweat or it could be because the leads are not properly attached because of less amount of adhesive material. So, these are all the possibilities. To, to avoid this, you should make sure the skin is clear, less hair and it is attached properly. So, this is not some abnormal cardiac activity. This is an abnormal activity because of the electrodes not being attached properly. Coming to this ECG, if you see this point, this is an isoelectric line, but this isoelectric line is somewhere above this. Similarly, in this lead also, you have an isoelectric line, but isoelectric line instead of being here, it is somewhere here. This is called as wandering baseline effect. This could be because of uh, movement of the patient or abnormal respiratory movements, all those things. So, this is also an artifact which can be avoided. And now coming to this ECG, when you look at the first instant, you may think it as atrial fibrillation. But when you have a closer look at these leads, you can see a P wave which is prior to the QRS. So, it is not atrial fibrillation. This kind of abnormal movements is because of the muscle tremors which could be either because of uh, anxiety or it could be because of the hypothyroidism related tremors or a Parkinsonian tremor shivering etc. So, this is also a kind of artifact. And can you look at this point in the ECG where you have very much abnormal activity? This is also not a 
abnormal cardiac activity this is also an artifact because of electromagnetic interference that is either because of having a mobile phone or a television or a radio nearby so this should also be avoided okay so now what is a normal ecg a normal ecg should be as in this picture it should have a normal isoelectric line without any artifacts the waveforms should be very much clearly visible so this ecg has a regular rhythm that is the rr interval or regular of 84 beats per minute and the p wave morphology that is the p wave morphology is an upright p wave in leads 1 2 okay so it is also normal it has a normal qrs complex so the qrs complex duration is less than 100 milliseconds that is not more than four small boxes and the p wave each p wave is followed by qrs wave you have a p wave here you are a Q, you have a qrs wave here and the pr interval is also constant not more than 3 to 5 small boxes so a normal ecg will have this is called a sinus rhythm a regular rhythm with a normal q p, p wave a uh, normal qrs wave that is a p wave which is followed by qrs with a normal pr interval with isoelectric line remaining the same and without any artifacts so before providing a final ecg printout you should make sure that the ecg is of good quality without any artifacts the waveforms should be very much clearly visible and also you should make sure that at the end of the procedure the electrodes are completely removed and disposed off to the clinical waste thank you i hope this session was really useful to you